This is K.M. Wyland, and you are listening to the 361st episode of the Helping Writers Become Authors podcast. I suppose it's appropriate that, as I'm in the midst of this current series about how to outline your novel, I'm also in the midst of outlining my own Portal Fantasy sequel, Dreambreaker. I finished the character sketches this week and got to start on the scene outline. This has already been a very involved outline for me. In part, I think it's because this is the first sequel I've ever written. And I also think it's because it was such a comparatively new story idea and hadn't had as much time to come together in my head, which means I had to work out more of the pieces in the outline itself than I usually do. But I can't remember the last time I've had so much fun on an outline. I'm crazy excited about this story and feel like it's got all kinds of cool elements to work with. The scene outline is where the actual pieces and the general big picture will start to come together into an actual beat-by-beat story. I'm having so much fun with it already. The latest post on my blog is the only reason your story should have flashbacks. Flashbacks are very handy for sharing backstory, but they're frequently misused and abused. Here's how to decide if your story needs flashbacks. To read the post, visit my site at helpingwritersbecomeauthors.com. And now I hope you enjoy this week's podcast entitled How to Outline for NaNoWriMo Part 6, Three Tips for Weaving Together Your Story's Pieces. Outlining a novel is not a linear process. Particularly in the early brainstorming stages, outlining is not a simple progression from step A to step B. Your brain is going to be bouncing all over the place. Step A makes you realize something about step Z, which makes you realize something about steps D, M, and U. Only then can you return to thinking about step B. The novel itself, however, is linear. When you start writing scene A in the first draft, you kind of need to follow it up with scene B. Scene Z has just got to wait until you get there. This is yet another reason I find the outlining process so creatively liberating. To write a controlled and optimized version of your narrative, you must be able to first step back and look at the big picture. You must see everything there is to see about your story and realize how each piece affects all the other pieces. And your outline is the perfect place to accomplish this. As we've talked about in previous episodes in this series, Stories begin as a random conglomeration of ideas. And from there, you must brainstorm your way to finding the story's skeleton, the basic shape of its plot. And that, in turn, allows you to begin understanding the story's heart, its theme, and the character arcs that drive it. That's when your bob and weave act begins in earnest, when you start identifying and filling your story's plot holes. And then finally, you dig down to discover the context of your character's backstory. And now you're done with the general sketches. However, the one thing we've yet to cover is perhaps the most important of all outlining skills, the bob and weave. This isn't a properly defined step within the outline. Rather, it's a technique you'll need to use throughout every single one of the previous stages. And yes, I realize we're now a full week into National Novel Writing Month, and if you're competing, You should hopefully be done figuring out how to outline your novel and have written a good 11,000 words or so towards your goal. But what can I say? This is what I get for not starting this series in September. Now, once you realize outlining is not linear, it frees you from the constraints of thinking of each of the above steps as if they lived in isolation. Although writers may often segregate various parts of the story, such as plot, theme, and character arc, In order to better get our heads around them, we must always remember none of them functions alone. Theme depends on character, just as character depends on theme. This, of course, means it's impossible to figure out how to outline any one aspect in isolation. Instead, you have to bob and weave from one to the next. As you're figuring out your story's plot, many of the questions you'll be raising will inevitably depend on answers of character and theme, and the same is true in reverse. A plot question may lead you down a lengthy rabbit trail about your character's motivations, which will inevitably be informed by his character arc, 
which will prompt further questions about where he finds himself at the end of the plot. Be patient with the process. Take each question as it comes naturally. Don't try to fit the aspects of your story into rigid compartments within your outlining process. But whenever you follow a rabbit trail into one aspect of your story, always bring it full circle to return and answer your original question. Although the bob and weave is a technique you'll use in small ways and large throughout nearly every aspect of your outline, there are three particular areas in which you'll want to consciously put it to use. Number one is weaving your plot, characters, and theme. These are the foundational cornerstones of your story. All three are important, and all three must be woven into the other two if they're to create a cohesive and powerful story. It is, however, difficult to work on all three at the same time. Only once you've worked a little on plot will you understand enough to work a little on character, which in turn allows you enough knowledge to start comprehending your theme. And so it goes piece by piece throughout the outline. And note, you can start with any of the three. It doesn't have to be plot. But when you work on your character's external goal, which is a plot question you must also consider how it is influenced by the thing he wants, which is a character arc question, which in turn is influenced by the lie the character believes, which stands in opposition to a truth, which is a thematic question. When you work on your story's external conflict between protagonist and antagonist, which is a plot question, you must also consider how this conflict is being driven and or is a representation of the character's concurrent inner conflict, which is a character and theme question. And when you work on how your character will demonstrate his changing attitudes over the course of the story, which is a character arc question, you must also consider how this will, in turn, change his outer goals and his responses to the external antagonistic force, which is a plot question. And on and on. Every time you find yourself asking a plot question, you must follow that up with related character and theme questions and vice versa. If you aren't working all three of these crucial story elements in concert, one or more of them will fall out of sync. And the result is inevitably a story that lacks thematic cohesion. Number two, weaving your protagonist's goals and your antagonist's goals. Even in situations in which the protagonist and the antagonist are physically separated for much of the story, they cannot be considered in isolation. Together, their mutually exclusive goals create the conflict, which in turn creates the plot. Think of your protagonist and your antagonist like lumberjacks on either side of a two-man saw. They must be pulling on the same saw back and forth, back and forth. If either one ceases to pull on that saw in his turn, the saw ceases to move and the tree ain't gonna fall. This means the characters' respective plot goals must evolve in harmony with each other. When you work on your protagonist's overall plot goal, you must then consider how this will be blocked by your antagonist's overall plot goal. When you work on your protagonist's scene goal, you must consider how it will block the antagonist's goals and in turn inspire a defensive or offensive response in the form of a new scene goal for the antagonist. And when your protagonist is off by himself making plans, you must also be aware of the plans your antagonist is in turn making off by himself. It is far too easy to come up with a cool battle in which your hero is doing awesome things and then fail to tie it soundly into the plot by connecting it with the cause and effect of the antagonist's previous and subsequent goals and actions. A good generalization of plot is that it is the give and take between the protagonist and the antagonist. What this means is that you must plan their moves in harmony every step of the way through your outline. Number three, weaving your POVs, timelines, and plot points. Once you have successfully woven together all your story's foundational elements, you will also want to consider narrative choices that ride a little closer to the surface. These are slightly more cosmetic choices. They do not affect the core of your story. They are, however, the vehicle that carries your story and as such are just as integral to its successful presentation. These elements include such choices as which POV or point of view will you use to tell each scene. If your story includes multiple plot lines or timelines, 
how will you order their scenes within the story. And if your story includes multiple plot lines or character arcs, how will you harmonize their respective plot points? Not all of these questions must be answered in the outline. But when you begin your scene outline, which we will discuss in the final installment in this series in a few weeks, all of these choices will influence the order of your scenes, the focus of your scenes, and ultimately the entire flow and force of your narrative. Making these choices requires a big picture view of your story. When you choose to use a supporting character's POV in one scene, what will this add or take away from your main character's POV in subsequent scenes? When you're using multiple plot or timelines, how can you order their scenes to maintain the best flow of tension and interest? How can you order the scenes to best contrast or mirror the events and themes in the alternate plot line? And when you're creating character arcs for multiple characters, how can you harmonize their important moments of evolution around the main structural plot points? How will these choices affect which POVs you must choose? Shaping a story is always an exercise in making optimal decisions. There are rarely perfect decisions, but when you consider all of your story's pieces as players on a chessboard, you are better able to understand which pieces must be moved, protected, or sacrificed to create the most pleasing overall effect. A firm understanding of story theory, plot, character, and theme will provide you the awareness to perform the bob and weave of outlining and to move your story pieces with confidence and precision. That is the true goal in figuring out how to outline a novel, not simply to pile one scene on another until you reach the end, but to craft a story form that is as solid and powerful as possible. Stay tuned. Next week, we're going to talk about how to properly structure your story while outlining. Thank you for listening to the Wordplay Podcast. To read a transcript of this episode, you can visit my website at helpingwritersbecomeauthors.com. And be sure to check back again next week.